hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we return with round 17 of our F123 My Team Career Mode. Yes, we're back this weekend at the Suzuka Circuit, of course, a track steeped in Formula 1 history. We're back this weekend in Japan. I am so much looking forward to it. If you missed out on the video that went live yesterday uh, from Singapore, I would definitely recommend going back and checking it out as well. Quite a dramatic affair of events uh, from the Singapore GP, of course, in Marina Bay. Uh, I won't leave too many spoilers to begin with, but yeah, definitely would recommend going back and checking that video out. But of course, you know, if you're new around here, I know I keep saying it for those of you that have been sticking around with the series. To you, I can only say thank you. But of course, yeah, if you're new around here, daily F123 my team until we win the world championship. So get yourself subscribed. Uh, at the time of recording this, we are about to tick over 109,000 subscribers. Uh, so we are getting very, very close to the big one of 110k there. A massive thank you to all of you uh, for the continued support throughout this series. But yes, yeah, we head to Suzuka though this weekend. Lots of major upgrades coming in then uh, for a lot of teams there. You can see Red Bull now have been jumped at the top of the table by Ferrari there. We're still sat in last place. Uh, with a couple more upgrades still in the works. But yeah, just trying to hang on with the rest of the field at the moment. Really, from Williams down to ourselves, it is so, so close to cool. Uh, you know, it has led to some fantastic battling uh, throughout this season there. Constructors-wise, we are still in P7. Drivers' Championship, we've been jumped by Pierre Gasly. We're back down to P12. So, looks like we could be battling it out with the Alpines between now and the end of the year. But, of course, yeah, today we head to Suzuka. Tomorrow, though, we're at LaSalle in Qatar for a race that I'm really really looking forward to as well so yeah definitely don't want to miss out on that let's do this thing well as we head into the japanese gp weekend though a couple of very very big announcements unfortunately I i've clicked off the email already Fernando Alonso is going to be retiring from Formula 1 come the end of the year. So Aston Martin are going to have to look for a new driver to partner up with Lance Stroll. But as well, we've got potential regulations for next season that are likely to affect the aerodynamic package of the car as well. So shock retirements, potential regulation changes. It is all as, you know, as we get towards the end of this first season, things are starting to fall in place for the future. But anyway, Japan practice, it's going to be a difficult track, no room for error here at Suzuka. Must admit, I know in previous games I haven't liked the Japanese Grand Prix circuit, but yeah, the last couple of games they really have improved this venue, and now of course with the handling of F123 I do feel like this place can once again return to its former glory, such an old school circuit, basically every corner around this place or every complex has its own history to tell, but yeah, Japan, Suzuka, it's old school, it's fast, it's flowing. And there's no room for error as well. A proper driver's track. But flawless first half. A couple of green scores sneaking their way in further around the venue here. But into the Casio Triangle will go very, very early on the brakes there. In fact, used to carrying so much speed from a Max Tank car and F122. But out of the final corner, up towards the line. Will that be purple? Only just. We do clutch up though. Let's get on with the racing run. Now, unfortunately, the qualifying sim run has once again reared its ugly head this weekend. So, yeah, we're going to have to only settle with the two other practice programs. But track climatization went really well. So I can only hope that we're going to get the same story here. Our first lap, then, is a promising sign. Quarter of a second up, despite not getting a perfect lap. The S's. I tell you what, the S's on F123. Where you're not worried that the car's going to spin out in fifth or sixth gear all the time. It properly brings back the magic of that set of corners. It's also quite good as well round here now, especially through the Degners. Uh, of course, because of the new physics as well, when you run off the track surface and things like that, how the, you know, you build up the marbles on the tyres and that sort of thing, you can't take the ridiculous line that you had to on the exit of the Degners anymore, otherwise you're just greeted with a wall of understeer. So yeah, it's just all those subtle little things. I, I tell you what, more often than not playing this game, as I'm sure you can probably tell, maybe with the exception of Singapore yesterday, I've often got a grin on my face. I'm building up more and more confidence as practice has gone on. It looks as well like it should be a sunny weekend here at Suzuka. So yeah, I often, often see a bit of rain, but this weekend 
looks like the weather is going to stay away rounding through the final couple of corners then for the final time hopefully in free practice unless I mess this up feel a lot more confident here than I did at Singapore I'll tell you that much but will that about to be squashed when we get into qualifying Of course, now, though, most of the focus inside the team will be moving towards Season 2 of this series. We aren't really, you know, in a major fight or anything like that. So the final seven races or so, we might just have to temper expectations ever so slightly. And, yeah, really put all our eggs in the Season 2 basket. As long as we can hold on to seventh ahead of pass in the Constructors, I think we can walk away pretty happy at the end of this season. We also desperately need to save up some money uh, so I can get a proper second driver in the other car as well. I think on F123 there's a bit of a bug at the moment uh, where you actually sign a new driver before Abu Dhabi, the final race. Uh, so we won't even have like the bonus and that kind of thing as well, of course, for finishing off the season to hire a second driver. So yeah, we're going to have to be really, really careful. Maybe it'll get patched, but I'm not going to hold my breath just yet. So we're going to have to be really, really careful with that. But anyway, we're trying to do a first qualifying lap here from Suzuka. Like I said, one of the most difficult tracks on the F1 calendar to really get everything out of where it's old school, where there is no room for error on the exit. You're either on the tarmac or you're off on the grass or in a gravel trap. Not many fancy runoff areas. That corner spoon is one of them, but even then there's a very, very aggressively serraced curb that separates you from that little bit of breathing room. But anyway, down in towards 130R, then really not scary in a modern Formula 1 car, rather sadly. Perhaps they need to take a load of downforce off the cars around this venue, but through the Casio Triangle we'll go, where Senna and Prost famously came together at the final corner, up towards the line. What will the first time be on the board? It's going to be a 28 3 We go between the Haas cars. Okay, Q2 might be doable here. Well, getting ready then to start my final lap then here from Q1 at Suzuka. Every other driver pretty much out on a lap apart from a few at the front. I'm sure Yuki Tsunoda already trying to make it through to Q2 in front of his home crowd. I think he'll get a lot of home support this year at Suzuka. It'd be really, really nice to see for him, but we need to concentrate. AI are going to be trying to find time, so I need to do the same if we want to make it back into Q2 again. I think my first lap then, a bit more hooked up than I'd ever originally given myself credit for. I think, though, we might just, only just, have locked ourselves into Q2 anyway, right on the cusp. We'll see if we can try to improve through the final couple of corners anyway. Breaking really, really late that time around. Apparently not late enough, though. Tap the curbs through the final corner, up towards the line. We aren't going to improve, but I think we've snuck by in P16. Yes, we have. So we were quite lucky there in the end, but yeah, we need to... That first lap was fantastic, and I didn't even realise. Well, there we go. Hamilton fastest at the end of Q1. A 126.9 seems aggressively fast around this venue, but squeezing by there by less than a tenth of a second over Oscar Piastri. He's had a lot of Q1 outings in recent weeks, it feels like. Yeah, Gasly, a big surprise there down in P21. And yeah, your homeboy Yuki Tsunoda only able to go 18th there. Casually 1.6 seconds faster than our teammate. We were closer to Hamilton than Aaron was to ourselves, but are we going to be able to go any better than P16 in Q2? Um, Sergio Perez out of qualifying, apparently. I'm not quite sure what the Mexican has done there, but anyway, back to start then. Our one and only lap here from Q3, uh, Q2 even, I should say. I mean, yeah, if we go any better than P16, I'll probably be quite happy. I hadn't even noticed Alex Albon have made it through into the second stage as well. So maybe, maybe we can beat him. And, and this lap's... <laughs> yeah, this lap's a complete write-off. Deary me. <laughs> Just got a bit too overzealous through the first couple of corners. Um, yeah, just continue to get slightly more and more out of shape through the S's as the lap went on. So we're starting P16 then here ready for the Japanese Grand Prix. 
Welcome along to the legendary Suzuka. This classic racetrack boasts a long history dating right back to 1962 when it was first opened. Will more history be written here today at the Japanese Grand Prix? So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position, and a very happy Carlos Sainz will start second. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Verstappen, Russell, Hamilton, Fernando Alonso, Ocon, Stroll, Perez, Norris, Hulkenberg, Bottas, Albon, Joe, Mr. Monaco, Oscar Piastri, Sonoda, Sargent, Magnussen, De Vries, Gasly, and the reserve driver rounds off the grid. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head down trackside for today's race. OK, this is our engine supplier's home Grand Prix, which means there's a lot of very important people here behind the scenes. I'd love to give them a strong result to watch today. Plus, a good result might make my post-race meetings a little bit easier. I don't know what Mark's on about there. We've, we've given him some decent results this year. He wants to be having a word with our teammate down at the back of the field about that. But I don't know about you guys. I love a good view of just the clouds uh, here around the Suzuka circuit. It looks like it's going to be quite overcast uh, throughout the afternoon today. As always, Japan actually not a particularly abrasive circuit on the tyres. So soft to mediums uh, is going to be the way to go. But again, I've got to try and nurse them a little bit more than we were able to last weekend out in Marina Bay. Kevin Magnussen had qualified himself inside the top 10. So to be honest, I'm quite happy he's got some penalties. But let's just, let's just see what happens. And there really does seem to be a sense up and down the paddock at the moment that maybe, just maybe, Charles Leclerc and Ferrari are still within this championship battle, taking a lot of points out of Max Verstappen in recent races, and they've got yet another front row lockout here at Japan. What is going to happen, though, here? Ready for the Japanese Grand Prix. Starting P15, we're not too far away from the points, but it is going to be a tall order once again. I think this weekend... We just need a decent showing there. Purple lineup okay, on the grid, there, waiting nice on Aaron at the rear the of the, the field. Starts. 27 laps around the Japanese Grand Prix, about to get underway. Five red lights. Lights out, and away we go. We show why I knew they're going off like a scalded cat off the line. Let's try and have a look there. Nowhere to go as we head down in towards Star 1. Hulkenberg to the outside of Lando Norris. As we'll try and find some room there. Oh, one of the Red Bulls. I think that's Sergio Perez getting squeezed out wide around the outside of Esteban Ocon as we're still going to try and get... Oh, three wide up in front there. Lance Stroll gets bullied out of it. Almost contact with Alex Albon. Desperately don't want to lose front wing on the opening lap here. So I'm just trying to jump out of the way of that one. And a very, very erratic start here at Suzuka. As everyone has seemingly somehow made their way through the S's there. But yeah, three wide. At the front of our little train there almost gave a lot of cars a lot of damage, but we have made it through. We haven't gained, we haven't lost anything off the start. And Zohuan Yu still seems dead set trying to find a way through. We will, though, have a look back to the inside of the Alfa Romeo there, stuck behind, staring at the gearbox of his teammate at the hairpin. And we will say thank you very much. Over to P14 and we'll go at the start of the Japanese Grand Prix there. As it looks like one of the Ferraris, I would assume that Charles Leclerc, they're still hanging on to the lead at the front of the field, but Max Verstappen then up into P2. So, of course, Honda, their home GP this weekend in their weird kind of on-off love affair uh, with Red Bull powertrains at the moment. I mean, Mark told me this was the engine spires home race rather than Silverstone, so I guess we've kind of got to stick with it. I don't really know um, at the moment, but yeah, we'll, we'll keep saying Honda, I suppose, and see if we get it right or wrong there. But anyway, Charles Leclerc leads still. At the end of lap one, Max Verstappen in hot pursuit. There was Hamilton up to P3. Here goes Alex Albon, though, to the inside of, I think that's Hulkenberg, 
Middle way up the road. No, he will not there. I'm sorry, it's Lando Norris rather than the Haas. Already then coming towards the end of lap three, and it feels like we're just trying to hang on with Valtteri Bottas and Alex Albon in front of us. Oh, here goes Bottas, though, as soon as I say that to the inside. No, he doesn't. Albon and Matt Williams, we know just how good that car is down the straights. Maybe, maybe it's a lack of drag and downforce and any aerodynamics, but it is what it is, as Verstappen, new fast lap of the day there. But yeah, we're hanging on to the DRS quite nicely early on. Very much feel like we, we're kind of in this battle with the Williams and the Alfa Romeo. There is, I think, Albon hanging on maybe to the DRS of the cars behind. Yet yeah, none of us are really losing out all that much to the tail end of the top ten. A little bit closer to Bottas that time round as we head back down towards someone. And I've got to remember, it appears that the AI can still be a little bit unpredictable around Suzuka. Occasionally, uh, they will break way too early in towards the first corner behind the car in front of them. So, got to be very, very careful of that. It is definitely a fun little circuit uh, for the AI. They, they've got some nuances still that they're trying to work out. But, yeah, just got to make sure we're not all over Bottas' gearbox at the wrong time. Bottas then hesitating slightly through 130R this time around, so we're going to be all over the back of the Alfa Romeo as we head out of the final corner. I'll be potentially going to be able to get a run on the flying fin to the outside as we head back down in towards the first corner. Bottas, that's exactly what I mean about the AI there. No way, no way in real life. I mean, actually, I suppose it is Bottas. No way with any other driver back out of a turn one here at Suzuka if you're on the inside. I can see more and more cars going side by side up through 130R up the road then. That must be uh, Lance Stroll and I think Hulkenberg then. So battling out for the final point early on this afternoon. Do not want to hit that curb too many times. That can always be a one-way ticket to the pit entry wall. But yeah, maybe. I mean, I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. But Stroll and Hulkenberg keep doing that. Maybe, just maybe, we can have a sniff at the top ten. Alex Albon is pushing so hard at the moment, trying to get that gap down to under one second to Lando Norris just in front of him. Of course, the former GP2 and F2 rivals back in the day. But are we going to be able to try and get a run on Alex then as we head back down towards Turn 1? So let's wait and see to the inside we'll go, Alex Albon. Again, that time round makes a bit more sense for the AI. Just could not quite hook it up around the outside there, I don't really think. I was going to give him much of a say on the matter either, but let's try and see then if we can really push before we dive into the pit lane and get this gap under one second. Unfortunately now, without Nico Hulkenberg and Lance Stroll battling each other, we're kind of now trying to match an Aston Martin's pace rather than, okay, say, a McLaren or a Haas car. Um, gap now up to two seconds, so yeah, unless they start going side by side again, we are, we are in a bit of trouble. I mean, P11 would, sorry, P12 again would not be too bad. Yeah, but, oh, we're only P12 still, aren't we? I thought we were 11th. That, that, sorry, that really spaced me out. And to make matters worse, tyre wear warning light has just flashed up. So, yeah, we've definitely taken most of the usable life out of this compound. I can see them just fighting around underneath me, trying to fight for grip there. So we put the power down out of the hairpin. That's been one corner we've been consistently fantastic out of all weekend. But, yeah, Holgerberg Norris just lose the DRS to Stroll and start battling. That, I feel, is the best-case scenario at the moment for us. I feel like tyre conservation upgrades might be quite a useful thing on this car, as Alden thinks about it down at Turn 1. But, again, the AI showcasing their weirdness doesn't actually go for it. We're going to peel into the pit lane, though, at the end of this one. As you can just see, they're getting very, very messy up through the S's, reminiscent of qualifying. Yeah, unfortunately, the gap to Lando and Nico really has opened up over this last lap or so, so perhaps hindsight is a beautiful thing, but going for that run on Alex Albon might not have been the wisest thing to do then as we peel into the pit lane, though, as well as a lot of other cars in this race. 51. 51 miles an hour. I am so stupid. Was worried about trying to hit the outside wall on pit entry there, to be completely honest, but... Yeah, a tough day, or a difficult, challenging day. Might just be about to get a whole lot more difficult as we're getting held up. What are we getting held up by? No! We're behind Yuki Tsunoda in this race. What on earth has happened? There goes Aaron Barnes, somehow already a pit stop behind. We've literally been shuffled back to the rear of the field. I cannot believe the luck in that. We sped into the pit lane. It should have been less likely that we got jumped by other cars. There we go. Aaron Barnes into the pit lane then. Has done a very good job at holding up some of the other cars 
on this lap. And I, I had forgot about Logan Sargent and Nick DeFree, so we're not quite going to be at the rear of the field. But we've gone from P12 to P19 with a penalty. How can things get so undone in the space of a pit stop inside F123? Lando Norris, and quickly the times can change in this race. New fast lap of the day for the McLaren car. We are going to get the jump on Magnussen and Oscar Piastri still, so we're back to P17 then of this race. But, yeah, just so, so annoying. It does make me laugh, but still. OK, so we're leading our teammate by 22.0 seconds. And I think that, that doesn't make me laugh so much. Aaron Barnes losing still about a second and a half a lap, like he was in qualifying. Um, if I don't laugh at that, I might cry. So, why new nice kick of oversteer as he heads through Spoon there, trying to put the power down on the exit. I'll be potentially going to be able to have a look for another move on the Alfa Romeo. It was first time around a late-breaking manoeuvre. Second time, oh, a little bit of contact. Give him the room off the corner and then try and switch him. Down around the outside, out of the final turn. Reminiscent of Perez versus Leclerc here. So we go side by side on the run, back down towards turn one. You can see the Alfa Romeo myself wheel to wheel. Is he going to back out of it? No, Zhou Guan Yu actually won't. Oh, but he will run completely wide and shadow ram himself on the exit. Maybe that's why the AI do tend to back out of that. No, bottom out over the curb, Oscar Piastri. Is he going to be able to make it work around the outside? Surely not. It's an audacious attempt by the young Australian. Haven't had many wheel-to-wheel -wheel battles so far with Piastri this season, but would like a few more. Like I said, still deciding whether he's in contention for a Season 2 seat for 2 and 2. Uh, whether or not he'd want to stay at McLaren, though. You guys will get to the side, of course. Well, Oscar Piastri down the inside at 130R. We'll give him the room. We'll keep it between the white lines. And somehow we'll be able to hang on there. I was not expecting him to go for that one, to be honest, but love a little bit of feist and aggression from the Australian there as Alban now has pulled off a move on Valtteri Bottas just up in front. So 10 laps to go. We're just trying to hang on and see if we can get back within the DRS range of this train. I mean, we're not going to get a good result out of it, of course, thanks to the penalty. But, yeah, if we can just get in that DRS. I want to add the fight still. That's what I want. Yeah, I don't know what it is exactly. I think just late on in the day. Still fancy trying to get my hands dirty here at Suzuka. So even though we've got this penalty, I still want to try and fight with any of these cars that we possibly can. Put two and two motorsport on the map, if you get my drift there. But heading out then at a spoon, are we going to be able to get a run on Yuki Sonoda once again? We might just be able to look to the inside. No, oh, he just blends the throttle slightly as well to the outside of the Alpha Tower. He wants to really, really squeeze me, but we'll try and hook it up. Get the car, use that Astro Turf as best as possible. Whoa. Kick of oversteer on the exit is Yuki Sonoda. We'll try and come back at me. Then we've both still got the DRS to the cars in front there, but we'll try and squeeze him defensive as we head back down towards turn one and swoop round the outside. We'll go. Scary move to make. And immediately it's gone badly wrong. <laughs> Deary me. We just we, we pull that move off um, and immediately just bounce out over the curbing. So we, we gain one and lose four in the process. Just, just, just get the car to the flag. This is not quite Singapore levels of nightmare, but getting there. And now, of course, it's my best friend Kevin Magnuson all over my gearbox. So I knew somehow already losing a lot of time to Pierre Gasly in the space of a lap. So third time to charm then on the Alfa Romeo, and that is well, again another very aggressive move, but probably the cleanest one. Actually, no, the first one was pretty decent as well there. It was another clean move. That's the most important thing, is now here we go. Yuki Sonoda under increasing pressure then. Um, yeah, someone, Oscar Piastri, of course, trying to look down the inside, and he'll make that move work. So, yeah, suddenly I was hoping we could still try and finish 12th on the road. Now maybe 14th. Oh, Gasly to the inside of Yuki Sonoda. That's a scary move between the former teammates, but Gasly might just have pulled it off. Yuki's going to try and stay up the inside. They're all contact between them then. And Yuki Sonoda just getting shuffled backwards late on in the afternoon. We're practically pushing him out of the final corner. As now we're going to try and look to the inside of the Alpha Tower as we head back down towards turn one then. Not quite going to be able to get close enough to Gasly in front. And yeah, Yuki Sonoda losing three spaces in, well, a lap there. So it's all going a bit downhill for him as well. 
And it would appear immediately then I've lost the DRS to PA Gasly. I think he's actually uh, my championship rival at the moment, like the one the game asks you uh, to set up as well. So could have been ideal uh, if we'd been able to beat him, but four laps to go here at Japan. I think now it's just about locking in this position. Well, two more laps to go then. Tyre warning lights flashed up on those front tyres. Don't look particularly happy late on in the day here. We are still slowly inching away uh, from Yuki Tsunoda, so I can only assume he's actually got maybe a tiny bit of front wing damage or something like that. Either way, Oscar Piastri has now lost the place to Pierre Gasly as well, so clearly the Frenchman has got the bit between his teeth, but two laps to go. It's just, yeah, I mean, we, we needed to get to the flag anyway today after the nightmare that was Singapore, but still, that pit stop... That pit stop really did change everything for the worse. Oh no, here comes Yuki. Down around the outside, clearly. The young Japanese spirit still strong late on in the day. We'll try and make sure we give him room on the exit of the corner there. But Sonoda yeah, did not quite have enough ponies to have a look around the outside. So we're starting then the final lap of the Japanese Grand Prix. Looks like Charles Leclerc once again has had an absolute barnstormer of it and once again the Stappen is not going to follow him home in P2 looks like the Mercs have got the jump on the Dutchman at some point this afternoon Carlos Sainz having a bit of a nightmare as I need to look less at the minimap there Sonoda still trying it as we start the final lap and we round our way through the S's but Charles Leclerc that gap at the top of the table once again is going to come down there and I mean well with the exception of Monza that's pretty much come down every week hasn't it since the Dutch Grand Prix there but and it's not by like three points or seven points it's been by 10 12 15 points in the second half of the year Charles Leclerc he is not giving up on a first world championship he can only hope Ferrari can give him what he needs there side by side with Sonoda oh he really did want to squeeze me there down at the hairpin but we'll make sure we give him the room on the exit again to see what right traction him though off the corner. Mercedes will come through for P2 and P3 there. Just look at Yuki. He's gone for moves everywhere on this final lap. Side by side in towards Spoon there. A little bit of wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact. I'll get muscled out over the curbing. And, well, Kevin Magnussen might say thank you very much. Not on my watch, though. We're going to try and drain the battery as we head down in towards 1.30 for the final time. But look how quick that Haskar is. As Kevin Magnussen thanks. I, I don't know how I've done that. To be honest, Magnussen is going to try... Oh, no! Oh, I'm so sorry, Yuki. <laughs> Deary me, just missed my breaking point. Tried to be brave. I've completely ran into the back of Yuki Sonoda. I've lost half the wing. I've lost the place to Magnussen. It's P18. And that's the end of the race. We'll see you in part Fermi. drive that was to take the win for Ferrari today. Well, Anthony Davidson, a resounding victory today, but what set them apart from the rest? I think a large part of the result comes down to temperament. They were able to keep their heads when everyone around them was losing theirs, and that's allowed them to get the best out of the car, to maximise the strategy, and to stay out of trouble. And here we are, a team that is no stranger to the podium, taking their place on top once again. A sublime race today and a stunning win for Ferrari. Take a look at the driver's standings. This result then narrows the gap between our championship leader and the rest of the standings. So, Anthony Davidson, who would you rank as your driver of the day? Max Verstappen seemed to just effortlessly weave through the other drivers today without a care in the world. 
He was definitely my driver of choice. It's time to check out the constructors' standings. No change in the top spot then, but with today's points, their hold on that lead is getting weaker. And with that, we wrap up another weekend of motorsport action. But with more races lined up, be sure to join us when we come back with more Formula One. Well, there we are then, the end of the Japanese Grand Prix here from Suzuka. And yep, Charles Leclerc, yet another race of victory there. George Russell will follow him home in P2 ahead of Hamilton. And Verstappen, Sainz, Perez rounding out our top six there. Fernando Alonso, his final Japanese Grand Prix in seventh ahead of Ocon Stroll and Lando Norris there. And luckily for us, Nico Hülkenberg unable to score points as well. But P21 actually, uh, funnily enough, is my worst finish of the year there. So Bahrain was our worst finish up until now in P20, but we've gone one better this weekend. And only Aaron Barnes uh, one lap down, about 30 seconds away from anyone else come the end of the GP. But that means championship-wise... Look at that, 17 points now. The gap between Verstappen and Charles Leclerc there. 14 points between Perez and Carlos Sainz. There's Hamilton and George Russell still waiting in the wings. It is likely a two-horse fight between now and the end of the championship. But will it be Ferrari or will it be Red Bull there? No points lost to Pierre Gasly. was still sat in P12 overall in the, uh, sorry, in the Drivers' Championship. 31 points to the gap in the Constructors, though again, that gap continuing to dwindle as well there as has still six points behind ourselves. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure you leave a like. Get yourself subscribed as well. And we will be back tomorrow then, like I said, at the all-new all La Salle circuit. It'll be all new for us inside the F1 game. I cannot wait. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below. And yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.